Item Number SCP-126 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-126 is kept within a standard Euclid-class humanoid containment cell, despite not having needs consistent with that of a normal human, or any kind of nourishment, as this environment has proven the most effective in keeping SCP-126 contained. In case of a containment breach, acoustic sensors embedded within SCP-126's containment cell, as well as the entire wing in which SCP-126's cell is housed, can be used to locate SCP-126. Firm but polite verbal requests for SCP-126 to return to its cell are to be given until it complies. Personnel interacting with SCP-126 must undergo regular psychiatric screening, and personnel exhibiting emotional attachment to SCP-126 must be administered a Class B amnestic and reassigned. Description: SCP-126 is an invisible and intangible entity that can only be identified via sound. SCP-126 is sentient, with the ability to speak in multiple languages in a female voice and engage in conversation with any subject within range. To date, no method by which SCP-126 can be visually detected has been devised, as SCP-126 does not appear to emit any kind of light, radiation, heat, or electromagnetic energy. SCP-126 does appear to occupy an area as evidenced by the ability to triangulate its suggested location via its voice. SCP-126 also emits sound when moving, consistent with footsteps made by a human subject wearing high heels with a mass of approximately 55 to 60 kilograms, though no depressions can be seen in any floor materials, and pressure sensors do not register any kind of presence. SCP-126 cannot pass through barriers that would prevent a normal human from passing, such as a closed door, but Solid objects can be pushed through the space it occupies without any effect. For unknown reasons, SCP-126 will comply with any request for it to follow a specific human subject or move to a specific location without question, though it may move away afterwards, or if it is not able to physically comply with the request. SCP-126 will engage in conversation with any personnel within its containment cell, preferring topics such as art, nature, and philosophy. SCP-126 exhibits knowledge of current topics and intelligence consistent with that of a college graduate, as well as moderate attention deficit disorder. SCP-126 will regularly change language without reason, and stray off topic while conversing without warning. Attempts to question SCP-126 about its origin or nature have been unsuccessful, as SCP-126 becomes confused when presented with such questions, and will quickly stray away from the topic. Despite not appearing to use or need any furniture or appliances, SCP-126 will request such items as a bed, dresser, mirror, and other sundries if not present, and is more likely to stay within a room if such items are available. A small number of personnel exhibit anomalous behavior after engaging in conversation with SCP-126, including but not limited to believing that they have known SCP-126 for many years and that SCP-126 is a close friend or loved one. If not treated, these subjects will begin to ignore basic needs in order to continue conversing with SCP-126, eventually dying from dehydration or starvation. SCP-126 was discovered in a suburban home in after several reports of the house being haunted. A Foundation containment team was able to quickly locate SCP-126 and, after conversing for several minutes, convinced SCP-126 to enter a mobile containment unit, which was used to transfer it to a local Foundation containment site. Addendum 126-1 Researcher Note To date, conversations with SCP-126 have yielded several notable personality traits. SCP-126 is mildly arachnophobic and will move away from any specimens introduced to its containment cell. SCP-126 exhibits a desire to assist with any task which it believes it can be of help, despite being unable to manipulate objects. SCP-126 prefers to converse with male subjects that exhibit humor and intelligence. SCP-126 expresses a desire to have children, and has conversed with staff on several occasions regarding child care methodology. SCP-126 has the ability to fluently speak English, French, German, Portuguese, Spanish, and at least three other unknown languages. Dr. Senior Researcher
Item Number SCP-128 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-128 is to be held in a windowless containment chamber with blast-proof doors and walls and a ventilation system that maintains Class 100 clean room conditions inside. The interior of the containment chamber is to be monitored remotely by cameras welded in place with protective grating. The speakers and laser monitoring system must be similarly welded into place and protected with grating. The entry to SCP-128's containment chamber must include an antechamber with a second locked door that cannot be viewed from the chamber door. Personnel entering the test chamber for any reason must wear ballistic armor and must not bring any loose item inside the chamber. All required equipment must be rigidly mounted to the armor. Interference with the laser monitoring system or the central wheel is forbidden unless required for maintenance. In the center of the containment chamber, a wheel must be mounted to a concrete pedestal and allowed to spin freely. Should the wheel be measured to spin at less than 4,000 RPM at any time, all personnel are required to evacuate the containment chamber, and foam nozzles will be deployed. Description: SCP-128 is an immaterial source of kinetic energy, which can be conferred upon any non-living solid material within line of sight of the source. The source itself is modal, with a tendency to remain along the walls or at the central wheel of the containment chamber. The line of sight is blocked by any opaque material, including lead, steel, or even single sheets of paper, but not transparent materials, such as ballistic glass. Opaque radiolucent materials will contain SCP-128's range of effect, suggesting that transmission of energy occurs at visible light wavelengths, but darkness does not prevent transmission of kinetic energy. Any loose non-living materials within line of sight of SCP-128 are at risk of anomalous propulsion to hazardous velocities. Items under 100 grams in mass have been observed to accelerate to velocities of up to 900 meters per second in a period of 0.1 second, similar in force to machine gun fire. Analysis of the mass and velocity of every object undergoing acceleration indicates that the system of affected objects contains a constant linear momentum of 2,500 kilograms a meter per second, anomalously unconstrained by direction. It is therefore advisable to have many heavier items available to the object instead of fewer, lighter items. Despite SCP-128's invisible immaterial form, it has been determined that the entity cannot be compressed into a space under a 2 centimeter radius sphere. Such compression with opaque materials, however, is not advised, as dust particles within the space will be excited generating extreme heat, potentially rupturing the compression container explosively. SCP-128 arbitrarily chooses which items to accelerate, with a slight statistical preference for new objects over older ones. Despite the existence of some form of acceleration choosing, tests do not indicate an active sentience directing the choice, with one exception. The object does not accelerate living material, with its own parameters regarding what is considered living. People or robots moving of their own accord are not accelerated, nor is any part that is rigidly attached. Dead or unconscious people and animals are also not accelerated. Unmoving but conscious test subjects report a light tugging in the presence of SCP-128, which immediately stops at the first sign of movement or animal-like characteristics. Plants and fungi, alive or dead, are similarly not accelerated. Unpowered robots, however, are susceptible to acceleration. Addendum 128-1 Recovery Log SCP-128 was recovered from a private home and reports of telekinesis and random anomalous kinetic activity had been previously confirmed by field agents. An MTF Mu-13, Ghostbusters, was called in to isolate and capture the anomaly. Control. Okay. Equipment check. Tranquilizer pistols? Mu-13 lead. All pistols loaded and checked. Control. Ballistic armor. Lead. Armor check. Move 13 Gamma. I'm not used to carrying this ordinance. Control. It's standard issue for this sort of intangible. We had to dig deep in our files. Had to look up old references. SOP on this dates back to 1968. The phenomenon was called a poltergeist back then. Delta. Poltergeist. That is old. Type 1 or 2? Control. It could be a Type 1, a telekinetic vector associated with a deceased person, 
but field agents said that there's considerable domestic strife in the home. It's most likely undifferentiated kinetic energy from a latent Bixby under extreme stress. Type 2. Lead. That's why containment involves the pistols. Trank all inhabitants, and it should shut down the anomaly long enough for us to figure out whose astral it is. The standard EMP tools are for containment of an autonomous intangible, should it be Type 1. Careful in there. Take no chances. Beta, get the parabolic microphone on the house. We need to identify inhabitants. Beta, mic online now. POI 1. How many times do I have to tell you, Brittany? Clean your f***ing room already. You're such a slob. POI 2. I did. It was spotless before I went to school. It was. Oh my god, Tyler. It was you, wasn't it, you little douche? POI 3. Nuh-uh. Why would I want to step foot in your nasty ass pigsty? Gamma. Considerable domestic strife, you say? Lead. Yeah. Just get in there and put them all to sleep. They could use the nap. And be careful with loose objects. Confirming three targets. Move out. Sounds of leaving the containment vehicle, approaching the house, and bashing in the door. Sound of tranquilizer pistol being fired. Delta. The sun's down. Lead. He looks young. Beta, check his vitals. Make sure the drugs aren't too much of a shock to his system. The darts are calibrated to someone at least 40 kilos. Gamma, Delta, find the father and daughter now. Footsteps through the house. Sound of tranquilizer pistol. Gamma, father's down. Reaching for a shotgun. Glad we got to him first. Lead. Good work, Gamma. Delta, find the daughter. Delta, tracked her to her bedroom. There's stuff everywhere here. Like a tornado ripped through here. Shades are pulled. She's got a pet hamster, but I don't see her. Trying the closet. Lead. Careful, Delta. That's probably the source of the poltergeist activity. Delta. Roger that. I just got hit in the face with a pillow. Lead. Quick, Gamma. Delta needs backup. Screams heard. Sound of wood splintering. Sound of tranquilizer pistol firing. Delta. Daughter is down. Repeat. Daughter is down. Chair just got thrown against the wall. Bookshelf falling over. Activity increasing. Marbles! She has marbles! Ow! Lead. We got a Type 1. Get out of the room, Delta. Damn it, just... Ow! Everybody out! Delta. Grab my hand and pull. It's... Wait. It's the hamster. It's a f***ing tornado hamster. Tracking the hamster. Lead. Delta, no! The darts aren't calibrated! Sound of tranquilizer pistol firing. Delta. Hamster down. Why aren't you stopping? I tranked your- Sound of data expunge. Lead. Everybody out. Delta down. Close the doors. Get ready for type 1 containment. End log. Closing notes. EMP deployment for type 1 poltergeist containment functioned as expected, but failed to contain the anomaly. Mu-13 Gamma backed the MTF truck through the residence wall into the daughter's bedroom and opened the back doors. When the anomaly was observed to be inside the truck, the doors were shut and backup was called to tow the truck with accelerated debris in the armored trailer. Cover story of tornado striking the house was released. Addendum 128-2 Principal Researcher's Notes Principal Researcher Dr. Cordelia Argent Subject SCP-128 Despite what the recovery log would say, this is not a poltergeist. Poltergeists are an obsolete term anyway. This is not a spirit or a consciousness as we might think of the term. It can't pass through walls or the like. This is a source of kinetic energy. I've updated the description to show this. It's hard to say what precisely it is, but it appears to be best thought of as a whole through which a constant momentum enters this universe. How this is accomplished is still the subject of further tests. In addition, the hamster did not have direct control over the phenomenon. If the hamster had conscious control, then the phenomenon would have ceased with its termination. Instead, if we continue the analogy of this being a hole, then the hamster was a valve covering the hole, which could have been opened or closed to allow in more or less momentum. This valve appears to have been stuck open. So all the talk about us having the ghost of a telekinetic hamster in containment should stop. It's inaccurate. Scratch notes only. Please delete.
Dr. C. Argent. C. Argent. Hi, Rod. Are you there? R. Argent. Hi, Cordy. Yes, I am. Congrats on your promotion. How are things? C. Argent. Okay. But I've been put in charge of 128, and its containment is stressing me out. R. Argent. What's that? Can you send me the file? C. Argent. Yeah. Hold on. Sending SCP-128.SCP. R. Argent. Got it. So it's some kind of kinetic energy entity? Sounds like just your sort of thing, Dr. Anomalous Physics. C. Argent. Ha ha, very funny. Yes, I figured out it's a field of constant momentum without a center of mass. Essentially, you treat the momentum of the system as a scalar constant instead of a vector, independent of direction. Simple enough mathematically, but it does mean that the energy in the kinetic system is constantly fluctuating and being added to, to maintain the constant scalar momentum. It's supposed to be modulated up and down, but apparently it was under control of a hamster, and when the hamster died, the field got stuck it up. R. Argent. So what's the issue about containment? There are procedures here. C. Argent. They're ridiculous. It's basically give it toys but take them away whenever someone enters the chamber just so it can fire the researcher's clipboard through his skull. I've had to fill the room with foam pillows and send janitorial D-class in there in full battle armor just to clear the body away. The site director says that's not the first time and I just… What am I supposed to do? R. Argent. You need a constant linear momentum without center of mass vector positioning in the containment chamber? And the controller entity of the momentum field demonstrates some familiarity with objects. C. Argent. Yes. R. Argent. It's a hamster. Give it a wheel. C. Argent. It's not a ha- That's why you're the biologist and I'm the physicist. Thank you. R. Argent. You're still the smart one with the promotion, sis. You're welcome. Item number. SCP-347. Object Class. Euclid. Note on Object Class. With proper counseling, SCP-347 may be considered safe eventually. Special Containment Procedures SCP-347 is currently kept at Site-17, in a 5 meter by 5 meter room, monitored by infrared camera, with attached bathroom complete with shower and bathtub, furnished as per request, containing a queen-sized bed, several Sumo brand furniture items, two armchairs, a desk and swivel chair, several bookcases and a TV with a DVD player. The bookcases are filled with various books, primarily adventure novels, harlequin romances, and art books. She has allowed DVDs of various movies and TV shows predating her arrival at the SCP facility, and may request new material to be reviewed every so often. Although SCP-347 does not wear clothing most of the time, she is to be allowed a wardrobe of whatever clothes she requests, as well as makeup and wigs for her own amusement. SCP-347's room must remain locked while she is within, and at least two staff members must check her door for any sign of tampering every hour. The door may primarily be unlocked to allow staff to and from her room. SCP-347 enjoys company and casually chats and flirts with staff who bring meals and other items, although staff are cautioned from developing too much of an attachment or attraction. SCP-347 is allowed to leave the room, provided that she is accompanied by at least one staff member of at least level 2 security, and must apply a layer of grease paint to her face and wear gloves, to indicate hands and facial expression. Personnel are urged not to say anything should SCP-347 choose to leave her room nude, and crude remarks are frowned upon. Should SCP-347 attempt violent action or escape, she is to be restrained immediately and returned to her room, with the door securely locked. Should SCP-347 successfully disappear from under the staff's nose, infrared heat vision goggles will be dispensed and strange occurrences must be reported immediately as signs of her. For security reasons, SCP-347 is not allowed contact with any other SCPs as of yet. Description SCP-347 is an adult or young adult female, standing at 164 centimeters tall and 55 kilograms in weight. Despite being a seemingly average woman between the age of 19 and 25, SCP-347 
is completely invisible. This also includes everything inside her body at any given moment, although her waste products and saliva appear once they lose contact with her. But her blood, skin, and hair samples all remain invisible. Testing has confirmed that she has normal eyesight, despite the fact that the cones and rods of the eyes must be visible in order for a human to see. SCP-347 describes herself as being an average female of mixed race, with brown eyes and wavy black hair, and refers to herself as Claudia, although it is highly likely that this is a false name taken from the actor Claude Rains, the lead of The Invisible Man. Her true identity has not been ascertained. Aside from her invisibility, SCP-347 has no unusual traits other than immense skill in picking locks, theft, and has been observed swallowing small objects in order to turn them invisible, displaying the ability to regurgitate them at will without dispensing all the contents of her stomach as well. A trick she claims she came up with after watching a Stevie Star performance on a late night show. SCP-347 was recovered in after local news and rumors about a poltergeist inhabiting an abandoned house drew attention of SCP staff in the area. After infrared cameras revealed that she still gave off a human heat signature, SCP-347 was quickly captured and after much deliberation willingly entered into SCP custody, asking for warm food and protection from the elements. It has been theorized that she had been living on the street and in abandoned buildings for several years. Although SCP-347 had adamantly refused to discuss such things, two deaths and several apparent incidences of ghost activity have also been attributed to her. When first recovered, SCP-347 showed signs of mental instability and violent outbursts, as well as compulsive theft and bouts of refusing to speak for several days on end. Traditional counseling methods have helped reduce the frequency and severity of such issues and it's theorized that with more time, SCP-347 may heal from the trauma of years of not being seen and being completely alone. It has been suggested that SCP-347 be introduced to other SCPs, as human contact appears to be quite pleasing, and she greatly enjoys being acknowledged without being seen as strange. When ignored, SCP-347 does not seem to demand attention, but rather toys with people by rearranging things and hiding things. When left alone with somebody who is sleeping or otherwise distracted, it should be noted that SCP-347 will touch and stroke a sleeping person, tuck in their blankets, and do other small things. SCP-347 has confirmed that this behavior just feels right, although the person it's done to often describes it as unnerving. Although SCP-347 is invisible in all terms of visible light, she may still be observed via ultraviolet or infrared cameras. Addendum Dr. Wrights has requested that all male personnel in contact with SCP-347 politely refuse advances. Document 3471 She's an invisible kleptomaniac. When you leave afterward, you're going to realize three seconds too late that you don't have your keys in your pocket anymore, and you will be held accountable for whatever happens. Besides, the last thing we need is an invisible pregnancy. Dr. Wrights. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.